Welcome to Climate Literacy, Navigating Climate Change Conversations. You're coming to the conversation about climate change at a really critical time. The global negotiations on climate change surrounding the Kyoto Protocol have not quite gone as planned and delivered the results we might have hoped. For instance, Canada was the first nation to formally withdraw from the Kyoto Protocol. But on the other hand, we're also seeing really promising signs of action on sustainability issues around the planet. We have massive uptake of solar in China, for instance, and even a transition from coal to lower carbon fuels in parts of the United States. Very few issues have drawn this much public debate and scholarship and activism. So you may be coming to this course feeling a bit overwhelmed by the various conflicting perspectives. This might be your territory. You might actually uh, do work in the field of climate change and sustainability and you're just looking to figure out what resources are out there or brush up on the basics. Whatever your reason for being here, this course offers a little bit of something for everyone. We divide the course roughly into two halves. The, the first half focuses on the basic science of climate change, under, understanding the components of the climatic system, how they interact, and what effect we as humans might be having on them. In the second half of the course, we move into the domain of solutions, the human dimensions of climate change. So there we focus on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, enhancing carbon sinks, and what policies are at play internationally, nationally, and even in communities to respond to climate change. So why are we going to talk about climate science? As a human community, we make choices and we make decisions based on a whole bunch of factors. And one of those factors is scientific evidence. So in this course, one of the overarching umbrella ideas that we're going to come back to again and again is the idea of systems dynamics. And in that, the systems part refers to the fact that we have all these different components of Earth's climate system, and they're interconnected in a multitude of ways. For example, here in Vancouver, we have forests, we have ocean, we have mountains with glaciers, we have humans, we have human infrastructure, and all of those things are components of the system. The dynamics part has to do with how the system can change over time, and also how changes in one part of the system can influence changes in another. For example, here in our area, we've had warmer winters, and those warmer temperatures in the wintertime mean that more insects are actually surviving through the winter, and their populations are growing. So we have a thing called the mountain pine beetle, which likes to chew on the inner bark of pine trees, and enough beetles actually kill the trees. So we have huge areas of the forest in Western Canada that are now covered with dead trees, and those dead trees are decaying, returning carbon to the atmosphere. More carbon in the atmosphere enhances the greenhouse effect, which actually enhances those warmer winters and helps the insects even more. So studying the science of climate change helps us understand how all those parts are actually interconnected. But just understanding the various aspects of the climate system isn't enough. We also want to understand the behavioral dimensions of human responses to climate change, as well as come to grips with the effective, affordable solutions we have at our disposal. Just reducing greenhouse gas emissions isn't our only goal. We're also looking to create healthy, livable, beautiful, economically resilient communities. In other words, we have multiple goals that we're trying to reach simultaneously. You may have also heard of some targets associated with climate change. For instance, keeping warming to within two degrees above pre-industrial levels, or reducing the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere to below 350 parts per million. But now is the time to have a conversation about whether or not the policies and the technologies that we have are actually going to get us to those goals. This brings us to the second major theme in this course, which is transformative change. Do we know what to do to get ourselves to low carbon resilient communities? We have to have a really frank conversation here about what we value, what we want to preserve, and who gets to make those choices. We're going to ask you to look around your area and tell us something about what's happening there. We're hoping through this community to generate a lot of stories, to generate examples of climate and climate change, mitigation and adaptation from all over the world. We know that this topic can be pretty controversial. We're looking forward to people sharing ideas, discussing evidence, and in general, moving us all forward in this crucial issue of our time. So welcome to the course. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs>